That was one of the best sprint races we've had in such a long time. I've missed the sprints. It's been so long. Okay, let's unpack this. But before we get into that, subscribe if you're new. Throw me a like if you got a second. And let's get going. Okay, so lots of stuff. This was an action-packed ra uh, sprint race from first lap all the way down to the very end. Uh, we'll try to do a few little clips here. I don't want to get in too much trouble, uh, but this is the top three. Obviously, Max pulling out a stellar performance. Uh, not as good as I would say as Carlos Sainz. What an amazing race from him. And then Lando doing well at the first, but really kind of dropping off. We'll go over the uh, McLaren's issues with this track uh, in a bit. Uh, but again, just got to say the, the the magic of Max is definitely back. He is an unbelievable driver, especially when he is command of a race. And it looks like the car, at least in his hands anyway, is pretty good. Uh, Perez, as we go through this, we'll go through some of the important people here. Perez was stuck in 10th for like 80% of the race. He could not get past Sonona. And in fact, they had a pretty epic battle Brown lap, I want to say 10 or 11. Uh, they had a pretty epic battle, and Sonona actually pushed back at him. And that turn 15, I think it is, uh, where you can really take a separate line in through there. He dove on the inside just as Carlos Sainz passed uh, Leclerc during the race. Same kind of dive that he did. Uh, excellent move. Unfortunately, Perez just has the car under him and was able to go through. And the reason all that happened, Perez was stuck behind all those guys because he had an almighty lockup and almost ended his entire race and probably his qualifying because the car would have been too damaged. From the two cars in Sonona and Hulkenberg, I think, were fighting or it might have been... Hmm, Call Pinto might have been in there. It's hard to say. But there, there was a fight up front and he almost hit them. So... Uh, aside from that, Norris had an awful last lap. The tires were completely gone. Uh, although his race wasn't as bad as Russell's. Russell was fighting really closely with Norris early on. And then his front right tire, he was complaining it over the radio and he just completely was gone. But let's go over, before we go too far, let's go over some of uh, the action. So these were the couple places that I want to mention that I really, my butt was clenched. This was lap three just as they crossed the line for the start of lap three. And look how close Carlos Sainz in fourth place gets to, uh, Carlos Sainz in fifth place gets to Leclerc in fourth place. I almost pooped myself. Watch this. Oh, I thought they were gonna crash. I thought they were gonna crash. I actually yelled out loud when that happened. That was so close. Okay, and this is uh, Carlos, I believe, passing Leclerc. This is that turn 15. Again, I'll bring up this trap map. Turn 15 here. They can really throw a dive inside that corner there. The track is really quite wide there, so they're able to do that. And that is this little part. And boom, he throws it up the inside there, pushes them wide. And the outside line on that corner here is actually a little bit better than taking the inside line. The inside line is not necessarily, if there's nobody else there, it's good to run the inside and then run wide and then push it into 19. Uh, but the way that he does it, he stays on that outside and actually a lot more grip there and uh, has to con uh, Leclerc has to concede as you throw it down into 19 there. So what a great move from Science. And again, he got Russell as well and he got Norris. So this was the unholy accident you can see this big pile of dust up here is actually two cars in front of him i believe it's hulkenberg and sonona but i'm not quite sure we'll get a good close-up and they're fighting it out and then whoever this is yeah that's hulkenberg and sonona and just look at this angle perez has so much more speed in this part of the track Whoa. like really kind of he locked up he had to back out of it and that's how close that was it was unbelievably close and this is the last lap between two Ferraris and Norris. Uh, we'll look at the lockup at the start, and then we'll look at what I believe is Norris being naughty. So all that uh, Carlos did there is made Norris look in his mirror a little bit. And as soon as he did that, he, he didn't lock up. I mean, he did lock up, but that wasn't the initial thing. He changed direction in the middle of braking, and that caused him to lock up. Uh, it wasn't a... It was a driver error, but it wasn't an unforced driver error. Carlos Sainz is very clever. He did that. He made his, he made Norris look in his left mirror, uh, left mirror. And if you know anything about racing, where you look is where you go. So if you look in your left mirror, you're going to turn left a little bit. And as soon as he did that, he did that in the braking and it locked up and Carlos was able to get by. And let's go down to the very end here. So this again is into turn 15. 
This is in this area right here. The natural line is to let this run wide early on into this. I, the way that they number these is kind of, this is 14, but there's a little kink in there and you want to run that super wide as you go into 15 and then cut in as much as you can and try to straighten that up as much as you can. And what Lando does is he defends that inside. And I don't think that Leclerc realized, he said moving under braking, but I don't think Leclerc realized how close or how, uh, how far in Lando was going to defend that. So Lando actually defends super hard here. Like he's, there is no room for a car there. And he's allowed to do that because he's on front. There's no one alongside of him. And Leclerc doesn't think he's going to do that. And he has to back out of it and then just kind of crazy move out of the way. And that saved Lando for the rest of the race and uh, rest of the last lap. And he was able to keep it together. But like, I really think that uh, this whole race, and that was just some of them. I didn't get the Sonona one. There was a bunch of Sonona versus uh, the Hasses. And I have to say the Hass, Mercedes pair were fifth and sixth, and they didn't look very good. Um, Hamilton wasn't able to get by Russell, but they just kept falling back. I think at the end of the race, they were into like nine seconds behind or something like that. Like quite a ways back. Where are we? Russell, 15 and seven. Yeah, they're about eight, nine seconds behind. Uh, that was a pretty big gap. But the biggest thing here, and what we want to keep in mind, is that a full race, you usually see whoever's in 9th and 10th really far behind. Now, we have Perez and Piastri out of sync. So, essentially, the 9th and 10th is Magnussen and Hulkenberg in the Haas. And they are almost right on the back. They're closer to the Mercedes than the Mercedes is to the Ferrari. Keep that in mind. So, that's a pretty big deal. Uh, I know it's only a sprint race, but that is uh, something to mention. And uh, what Chris mentions here is that that moves them up in the Constructors' Championship. They overtake RB with those few little points they got there. What else do we got? I uh, know we've already went all over there. So I want to go over a little bit. That's the main bulk of what happened. Uh, there was a couple, quite a few other things. I think the best drive for me personally is Sainz. Uh, if there was a driver of the day for the sprint, I would have gave it to Sainz. Uh, he drove amazingly well. One, he overtook his teammate, which again is very hard to do. Leclerc is a good driver, but then he overtook a Mercedes and Russell who looked very quick yesterday. And then he overtook Lando in what is arguably still one of the best cars on the grid. What's happening with McLaren? Why are they so slow? I'll tell you why. This track has been resurfaced from about here all the way down into somewhere in these S's. I can't exactly tell what it is. It's, it's before sector two. So I think it's like right about here. The McLaren is slow from, oh, turn 19. What's my notes say? Lando slow turn 15 all the way to turn two. So as soon as they get into this area here, he's not very good in the breaking into 15. We saw science catching and catching and he was losing um, Max in that same area all the way in through here, all the way through the states. He's also not very good in sector two uh, and all the way up to about turn two, maybe turn three. And then that's kind of where the tarmac, the new tarmac stops. And as soon as the McLaren gets into these S's, he was pulling four or five tenths from the Ferrari in these S's. Now I also have noted on here, the DRS is very powerful here. So if you get anywhere and not just the DRS, but the, the drag is also uh, really good. So if you get into the suck of the of these big straights, uh, you're able to, even without DRS, you're able to pull up uh, to the car in front of you. That's why you saw Perez close that distance and almost have that accident uh, coming into here is because that, that suck, if you're aerodynamically efficient, you're gonna catch up to that car. And if you're in DRS, man, it's even faster. So you saw Lando be able to defend through this sector two, this big long straight, because they're so strong in through here. Carlos was eight tenths by turn three, and then he was like 1.2 seconds uh, by turn 10. So the McLaren is very strong in this kind of end of sector one, start of sector two area, like so strong, like five tenths faster strong than most other cars but kind of crappy everywhere else as far as I'm concerned. At least that's what I saw from Lando's car. I'm not sure from Piastri, the action wasn't really on him. So it's interesting to see that that bad zone that uh, McLaren is in is also the resurface zone. So I think they probably is tire related. I suspect tomorrow when we move to hard tires that that won't be the case. Uh, the other thing for this track is not only is the DRS very powerful, but it is very hard to follow. Uh, you saw when Carlos was trying to overtake uh, Leclerc so many times following in through sector three is very, very, very difficult. We saw lots of people be able to catch up in turn 12, keep with them into 14. But as soon as you go into that turn 15, it's super hard to follow when following in through here. And we saw that in the Leclerc clip 
as soon as he got a little bit behind Sainz, that dirty air off the wing, um, it really is hard to follow there. And uh, and everybody, every single person that tried to do that, Sonona, Perez, uh, Piastri trying to fight through people, very difficult. Uh, Colapinto did very well. I think he held his own against quite a few other people. Uh, we saw quite a few complaints from Al Alonzo versus Liam Lawson, who didn't do very well. A lot of the other teams kind of had a hard time in a lot of these uh, positions. Jao Botas, way off the pace. That car is absolutely terrible when it comes to uh, actually getting around the track. Okay, so what else do I have here? I think that's probably it. There wasn't much else to unpack there other than the fact that uh, that uh, Max is quite good in clean air. Uh, very, very concerning for Perez and for Red Bull following not in clean air because I believe this track is very good. Uh, there's not too many crazy curbs aside from going through the S's at the near the start of the lap there. Uh, so I think it very, very much suits the Red Bull because as soon as you introduce heavy curbs, uh, like you would see in Silverstone or uh, in Austria, the, 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 the Red Bull really does have a hard time going over curbs and the USGP doesn't really have, really have a lot of those. They were able to hold on to most of that kind of stuff. But concerning for Perez that he wasn't able to pass Sonona for what looked like about like nine laps as soon as he started to catch up to him, uh, that's not good. So what Red Bull has to do tomorrow is, or later today rather, is really get that qualifying down pat. They have to qualify really high up. I don't imagine Perez will, but I think this is very clinch. I think Max needs to get pole here and he needs to defend it into turn one tomorrow. Uh, otherwise, I think they're going to have a hard time uh, because it doesn't look like they're as good as following as if, if we just compare how, how well Max did versus how much struggles Perez had. Again, they're not the same driver. They've always been kind of uh, in different leagues. Uh, but we saw that from Piastri as well. He was able to fight through a little bit better than Perez was. Uh, but again, had a hard time following, especially in through that third sector. And again, by the time you finish the race out, Piastri, 37 seconds off the lead. And that was only in 20 laps. And that's just trying to pass guys and be in a DRS train, which was also quite powerful here. The DRS train was a little bit too much. Uh, so yeah, that was it. Subscribe if you're new. Throw me a like if you got a second. And I'll see you guys for qualifying.